Hey guys, welcome to this episode of Tour on Tuesday. In this episode, I'm gonna be going through my guitar collection and how I tech um, my guitars, how I restring and how I how, how I take care of my guitars. Um, this episode it, it is pretty long. It, it's a longer episode um, uh, this week, but hopefully you guys can learn a bunch. Hopefully you can see the collection, um, and I'm really excited to be to be presenting this uh, to you guys today. So, um, without further ado, let's get into the guitar collection. Okay, so behind me I have my guitar collection and I wanna go through my guitar collection with you uh, right now. I'm gonna start on this side and work my way around. Um, I think that's like the easiest way uh, to do this. The other thing like is, I, I have like very expensive guitars in my collection and like not so very expensive, like pretty cheap guitars in my collection. Um, the reason I have a lot of guitars is they all m sound different, they all are meant for different things, um, and, and I'm gonna go in depth with that with you right now. So let's get into the first guitar. Okay, this here is called the Lore. Uh, literally, the name of the guitar company is The Lore. Uh, this guitar, actually, all it's meant to do is sit on the couch and have it ready for me to play. Uh, I keep a tuner on top of this one. Um, this one is just for meant, it's just literally, I, it's just for me to like write some stuff down or, or like kind of have it on the couch, not in a case. And this is kind of one I don't mind getting a little more beat up than the other ones around here. Um, there are no electronics in this one. I'm gonna point that out, out on all the guitars because a lot of guitars I have do have electronics in them. Um, this one doesn't because it's just meant for me to, to, to hang out, either go outside and relax and play or stay in here and play. And uh, you know, it, 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 it's an easy guitar. To, you know, the neck feels good. Um, it's an easy guitar to play. It's a smaller body, so it's like kind of close to like a parlor guitar. Um, but I love the sound of it, and it's really, it's also just really fun to play. So uh, that's uh, that's the first guitar. This here is the second guitar here in my collection. Um, this one does have electronics in it, um, and this is another. Lore guitar. Uh, this is the exact same guitar as the first one, except this one has a little bit of a different finish, and it also um, has electronics in it. So I actually record with this one. I lay down some ideas with this one. Um, um, this one also stays out, but if I want to get more in the professional mindset of wanting to lay down an idea or a track or something, um, I'll actually use this one. This is like um, a, a good like way to like lay down ideas and, and if I'm doing like recently I've, I've been playing uh, for my family on live streams um, during the coronavirus um, and so I'll actually use this guitar plug it into like an interface so it's like real like it, it's 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 plugged right into the computer so I actually use that so this is a guitar I actually will use on that um, one of the two guitars I'll show you the other one in a little bit but uh, this one's great um, and it's fun to play as well the, the I mean it's it's, it's just a fun guitar to play. Okay, off, uh, off to the next one. Alrighty, this here used to be my main guitar. You can actually see it's a little beat up right there and uh, also has electronics in it. Um, and this is a guitar I bought almost two years ago. It's traveled everywhere with me for the better part of a year and a half to two years. Um, I bought this guitar knowing it wasn't going to stay my main guitar. I just wanted a, uh, an acoustic at the time. This is the first acoustic I bought myself. Um, I've done, obviously, there's, there, you know, I've done a little number to it here, but uh, uh, changed out some things on this guitar, and uh, now it's like it's it's a, it's a fun one to play. Um, I, I've you know I put strap locks in a lot of my guitars, so I, it's easy to take the straps on and off. Um, so I, I add that to the guitar. Uh, these bridge pins, I, uh, I th these are different ones I put on here. There was like plastic ones. I wanted to go with wood ones, so that's why that's on there. Um, and I'm and I've been recently playing with the idea of uh, changing out these t these tuner pins. But um, anyways. That's uh, that's this guitar. This is a Yamaha guitar. Uh, it's it's like pretty cheap, so I don't really mind doing this to it. Um, so uh, I actually kind of like the look of it. it. Says it's being used and played and loved. So I, I love this one. Um, okay, 
off to the next guitar. This guitar, the next one's kind of cool as well. It's the money, it's, it's the money, yeah. It's the money, it's, it's the money, it's, it's Okay, this here is my acoustic baritone guitar. You can see the neck is significantly bigger. Um, the body's closer to like what the lower guitar were. So this is um, 16 inches across the lower bout here. Um, also has electronics in it. Um, and this one I tuned to drop D. This is actually made, made as a baritone guitar, so it's meant to have baritone tunings. Um, I actually tune this to a regular guitar, I just have more scales. And it's a uh, baritone tuning. Um, so, or not, not a baritone tuning, sorry, it's a drop D tuning. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great one to play, great one to play some drop D in because it just has a nice full sound. This body's pretty big so it resonates in there nice. Um, and it's, it has a nice deep rich sound which, I, which is one of the reasons I love to play drop D in this. So uh, uh, actually here's the funny story about this, this is an Alvarez. Here's a funny story about this Alvarez guitar. I was out on tour uh, probably about a last summer, I think it was, and uh, I like to go to different guitar shops, see what's out there, and uh, I saw this one like, in the back corner and kind of shoved back there, and I asked to play it, and they gave me a really good deal on it because no one really wanted an acoustic baritone. I said I'll, I'll take it, and so that's, uh, that's how this got into my little guitar family, so uh, I, this is a fun one to play as well. Okay, off to the, uh, off to the next guitar. Uh, my 12 string. There is one string missing here on this 12 string. This is a D'Angelico 12 string. Um, I don't play enough 12 string. I wish I played more 12 string. Um, I, I just need to buy more 12 string, like, string packs for this. I, I haven't done yet. I've neglected to. Um, this one also does have electronics in it, but it's down here. I think that's a big reason why. I like my electronics right where the strap is because I like the, the uniform look. Um, this is really fun to play. It's a little, it's a nice, nice kind of smaller body, um, and uh, I mean, there's nothing bad to say about this. It's a D'Angelico, so they're, you know, they're built nice. And um, I don't know, this is a, this is, I, I don't get to play this as much as I wish I did. I wish I played this a lot more, but it's, uh, I guess it's almost already to play. It's just missing one, one string. So um, I don't know what else to say about this. So I'm just gonna move on to the next one. My, my electric guitar. This one gets played even less than the 12 string. This almost never gets played. Um, I was pretty bored uh, here being quarantined, so I decided to uh, paint the guitar because I, I didn't know what to do. So I actually used uh, those spray paint cans up there to, to paint this, and I did a little little thing here on the back. Yeah, so I did this little thing on the back. Um, and uh, this does not get played enough. That's why I have like the wrong strings on here. So I need to like redo that. But uh, this is like a cheap Strat that's like probably about 80 bucks. So uh, it's one of one of the guitars to kind of like, experiment with some stuff on. Um, so that's uh, that's this guitar. Yep, doesn't doesn't see a lot of a lot of play time, but it's fun to mess around with. You know, like with electronics and. Different. All right, that's that's this guitar. Ha! Ah, Tiny Tim. That's what we call this guitar. This guitar is a. Uh, I think this is called the. This is a Breedlove guitar, and I think it's called pa the Passport. I can. I can't find these online right now. Um, the funny story with this is I was out on the road. This, I think this was two years ago. Um, I was up in New Hampshire. Wasn't really looking to buy a guitar, was just kind of looking at looking around at guitars. And I saw this one up on the uh, up on the rack, and I, I just had to have it. It was just so unique, and um, it's tuned in A. And um, it's it, and, and what's funny about it is I was, I was there buying it, and I didn't really want to spend money on a guitar. And then I realized uh, New Hampshire had no sales has no sales tax. So with the price that I saw this, I just couldn't give it up. So. Uh, I literally walked across the street to the bank, took out some cash, and 
I have this little thing. Um, I've contacted Breedlove about trying to get another one made for me. They don't even make these anymore, special order or anything. So uh, if you know anyone who has one, I'll take another one. because They're really fun to travel with and to play. Um, and it's a nice little short scale. I love this thing. All my, so um, my old assistant Ryan um, and Cole, who did, not even a guitar player, but he likes to pick this up and just kind of like mess around and hang out. And um, it's a really fun one just to kind of play, play around with. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that, this is what we call Tiny Tim. And this here is what I call the bedroom guitar. Um, another tuner on it, it's another breed love. It's a, it's a short scale as well. Um, and, uh, this one here literally just sits in my bedroom, and, and if I have an idea, you know, it's ready to play. I don't keep it in any tuning, I kind of just like work on some stuff, but this just lives in my bedroom for any time I just want to like play. Um, and it, it's nice to have, I basically everywhere I go there's a guitar in the room, just so I, I can never like have an excuse for not practicing or not working on something new. Um, and, and that's kind of the idea with all these guitars. They all are meant for different things, meant for different tunings, meant for... Some of these are meant for travel, some of these aren't. I don't travel with this one anymore. This used to be on the road with me. Um, I don't travel with this anymore. Um, it just sits in my bedroom ready for me to play. So, um... Yeah, can't say anything bad about this. This is a fun guitar. Okay, off to the next one. Okay, this next guitar is like my dream guitar. Like everyone has like that dream car they wanted, the dream house. This is my dream guitar. Um, for many years I've wanted uh, a guitar from this company. Um, I did some research before I shot this video. Apparently there's only 700 of these guitars out in the real world. Um, I, um, I, I, came, I came to know about this company through um, my favorite band and the reason I'm in entertainment industry in general, it's audio, video, everything, um, it's the Dave Matthews Band. Uh, Dave Matthews had this guitar, um, not, not this exact like, one like, in his hands, but he has this exact everything and so I, I didn't know if you could just like, go to a store and buy it, so I found a company online, I called them up and he said they only do special order guitars. Um, so uh, I ordered one and waited about a year and two months and it finally came. So uh, without further ado, here it is. <laughs> Here it is, my dream guitar. Um, so this here is what's called a rock bridge guitar. Rock bridge. Um, this is their black jumbo series. They, I, I, I talked um, to Brian, who actually owns the company, who's become like a kind of a friend of mine, and he he said they've barely made any of these for other people besides Dave Matthews. There's not a lot of them. Um, this one's very special, and here's why. Everything on this guitar is exactly what Dave Matthews plays. The wood, everything. The, there's only two differences. One is the pickup. Um, Dave Matthews uses a pickup in his guitar that is very specific for huge arenas, huge concerts, huge, and I don't need that. I'm not playing huge venues, so I, I opted not to have that. Um, the other thing I, I, I opted to have is right here at the 12th fret, there's an inlay, custom inlay only on what I know of. I don't know if this was 100% true, but what I've heard is only on two guitars in the world. Um, there's another celebrity who has this exact inlay in me. Um, I, I know who that celebrity is. I don't want to like give it out or anything for, I guess, safety reasons. Um, but this is a, uh, a hand-drawn picture from Dave Matthews himself on the 12th fret of, of a rhino. He has a really um, interesting um, Rhino uh, Reserve out in Kenya. Um, this is not sponsored by them in any way, but but I, I really um, I, I, I like people supporting uh, you know nature or other people to, to help uh, the world to become a better place. So I'm gonna put um, their their charity down below. Um, if you can throw them a few dollars, that would be awesome. But I this is literally my baby guitar. I love this thing. This thing I play this so much so much and it actually lives in that case it will not ever be on this racks until I 
um, unless I just finished playing it or I'm just about to play it. But this lives in its case. Um, I, I, I just got this, so it hasn't even been out on the road. It's, it's, it hasn't even been christened. It's still a virgin, I guess, because it hasn't been out on the road. So, um, but it just has a full body. Um, it's it, it, it's it's what's they're known as their uh, jumbo guitar, which is what I've researched is not a real a real jumbo. This is 17 inches across. So if you remember the, the, that baritone guitar is 16. So this is only an inch bigger. Um, I've heard a real baritone is anywhere from like 20 to 22, which seems huge. I mean, this seems huge, um, but this thing is awesome. I, I have to restring it. I've gotten the strings in. Um, I, but I'm gonna restring some other guitars for you here today. Um, but that, that's my collection. This is my rock bridge and this is the rest of my collection back here. Um, so now we're gonna jump into me showing you how, how I like to restring um, acoustic guitars for that matter. Um, and I'm gonna show you on what's called the B-Rig. Um, there's a band I'm with right now, which I'm their uh, stage manager and guitar tech, and I have their B-Rig. That's their second rig, their second guitar rig. I'm gonna be using that to show you how um, I restring guitars uh, they're just here in the studio or live out out during the show. So, uh, all right, let's uh, let's go over there. Okay, so right now I have my B rig set up. Um, this is like part of the B rig. This is all the tech stuff in here. I have a bunch of drawers back in here. I'll uh, put some B roll in. Um, on top we have all the tools I need to, to like repair and, and re replace some stuff here on the. Uh, on the guitars, I have extra strings that we use, extra cables, all the cleaning supplies and extra uh, in-ear stuff and batteries and stuff like that. Underneath, I keep paper towels. I keep uh, extra strings and, and a bunch of like a light and, and some um, RF readers and, and different things like that in here. So um, I'm going to be restringing two different types of guitars. I'm going to be restringing this guitar here. This is what used to be the main guitar. And I'm also going to be restringing the baritone. Um, this someone is a little bit unique because the reason why I decided to restring it here on camera. Um, all my guitars get restrung every month. Um, that that's just a rule that I that, that I go by. Okay, so we're going to start out here. My first thing I'm going to do is grab these my trusty guitar picks. Um, I carry a lot of these. Um, these are. Uh, well, he's in the B rig, so there we actually have custom ones that that the band uses. But I just have these in here, um, and a string winder, and string cutters, and a cleaner or a brush. Okay. Um, okay. So right now we have it all there. I'm gonna take off the strings now. The reason, uh, the way I I, um, I restring my guitars. I learned uh, from, well, a bunch of YouTube videos. I like to see how other people restring guitars um, because everyone does a little bit differently. The way I do it is a way, um, Joe Bonamassa's tech, the way I saw him do it, and I really liked it. Um, and then I've kind of adapted some of it um, and kind of put my own little twist on it as well. Um, so I'm just gonna undo all those. And then, if you didn't know, on a pick uh, winder, you have a little notch. That little notch is for bringing uh, bridge pins up. Um, so, I'm gonna bring this one up. And oh, also, very important that I've learned. Uh, I keep these little extra containers for that live, especially live. I always uh, have those. So I'm just gonna take out all these bridge pins. Okay, all the bridge pins are out, and now all I'm gonna do is pick up all the strings. And then check this out. All I have to do is, and we're done. And that's out, and I do this for the ease of uh, taking these strings off and on. Um, you know, occasionally strings break during shows, and I wanna be able to take these strings on and off very easily during uh, during a show, just in case something happens. So normally I'll have actually a I forgot a garbage pen uh, bin. I normally keep a garbage can near me while I tech. Uh, for now, I'll just put it over there. Okay. At this point, the the strings are off. I'm gonna start cleaning uh, the guitar. Um, 
So I'm gonna grab my microfiber cloth and guitar polish. I'm just gonna do this really fast because um, some people probably might not find this so exciting. Um, so, but if you do, that's good. I'm glad you're uh, glad you find this exciting. I always do. I always like to clean the inside of it right here because it's hard to get with the strings on. Um, clean right over there. Clean the sides here. Make it look nice and pretty. Now, on this guitar, I don't clean the fretboard. I just leave the fretboard as is. Um, so, putting that away. Um, you know, this up here can get dusty. So what I like to do is just do this, kind of get the dust off like that. Um, these are getting a little bit loose, but you know, I think uh, th they'll be fine. Okay, uh, I'm gonna grab some strings now. I, uh, I, buy, I buy the big uh, shop strings, the big bulk shop strings. Um, so I don't actually have to, uh, I don't actually have to like open up individual packaging. Okay, so right now, this is how I uh, will put my strings in. Uh, I have my, my, my string here. Um, I, I do this in any order, I'm just doing it in this order for today. Um, but I put it all the way down so it hits the bottom. Lift it up a little bit and put the pin in. At this point, I pull the, the string all the way up and tight, okay? And I'll leave that like that, and I'll just move on to the next string. Okay, I've made it to this point now, and now what I do is I get these holes lined up. I put these holes almost perfectly straight on uh, with each other, and I'll show you why here in a little bit. So, uh, and, uh, I'm more picky about the holes when I do it when I'm not doing this live. So uh, put these here, and I'll put my, my first string into the holes. The first thing I do, right into the hole like that. Um, a lot of people say don't put it in a nut, don't put it, I really don't care about that, so I'm just gonna put it in um, just to size it up. And I pulled, right now I'm, I'm pulling, not too hard, but kind of hard, and I'm gonna measure two pegs and, a, and I just add a little bit more just, just to be safe and I cut. I have nowhere to put these but I'll just put them here for now. Um, and, uh, and then I cut. From here I pull back, right? And now this is where I start putting tension on the string with, with this hand, right? So I pull back, I pull up and around, and pull, uh, wrapping away from me right now and then I wrap this excess straight up and then I kind of start the wind with my hand uh, while putting pressure on the string. And then I grab my winder and I wind underneath this wrap here. It's not gonna be the best right now, but it'll do the job. So I wrap underneath right there and kind of get it somewhere in the vicinity of what it's tuned to. Um, and then from here, by the way, I have this sticking up. I actually cut this right here. The reason why is I don't want to cut any, any strings that I just put on, and it reminds me that that is ready to go. So that's what I do. Grab my next string, and I just rinse and repeat. I, I do the same thing for all uh, for all six. So I'm gonna, now here there's only one, so I'm gonna imagine, so I kind of imagine it's here and up a little bit, and then that's where my cut's gonna go. All righty. Okay, so I'm here at the last string. I'm doing the same thing, but obviously I don't have enough one to size it up. So I kind of imagine here at the end would kind of be one, and then I kind of go, I just eyeball it to be a little bit extra. Um, it kind of is that old wood shop rule of measure twice, cut once. So I come here, I wrap. Pull up, I start the wind here a little bit, grab my string winder, and start winding. Uh, I might put my finger here just to make, see if the bridge pin's popping out. 
I'm not pushing down, I'm just kind of feeling. All right, I feel fine about that. And that gets cut. Okay, off to the, uh, to the other side to make it easier to talk about. All righty, it's in the, in the hole here. Now, if you noticed on, on, on this set of strings, I, I wrapped away from me. Now, I'm gonna wrap towards me. So, imagine that I'm cutting. Oh, see, sometimes that happens, so, but that's, that's fine. Okay, so put it back through, and then here, I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna wrap towards me, just like that. Uh, um, so then here, we are, uh, here we're winding counterclockwise from, from if you're on my side of the guitar. So these, uh, okay, here's that, and off to the next, off to the next one. Okay, I'm on my last one here. Um, one thing I've noticed about the wrap, uh, that, that's, that's the wrap I do right here, is on the, on the higher strings, on, on, on like the high E and the B, um, sometimes they're a little bit harder to wrap. Um, so sometimes you just have to play with it a little bit, but um, I, I, I've, been, I've been tuning it this way for a bunch of years, so I'm pretty used to it. Um, so, um, you know, you might just have to buy a bunch of strings and just keep kind of trying um, and, and playing with it so until you get the feel of it. Um, okay. All right, there we go. Uh, the next thing we have to do is tune. Um, I, right now, since I don't have to, the tuners are, we have one in here, I'm just going to use uh, this tuner app. Um, when you tune your guitars after doing this, um, don't tune them flat down here. Bring them up like as, as if you're going to actually, as if you're going to actually play them. Sorry, I was looking at the monitor. Um, okay, so now I'm just going to tune. There we go, so I'm all tuned up. The only um, only thing I would say about uh, tuning is I tune so it gives it a little needle dead on or a little bit higher, a little bit lower. I actually tune a little bit sharper just so when I, uh, see how off that already is? So then, so now I tune again. There we go. Um, I, that's just kind of stretching the strings a little bit. Um, when you put new strings on a guitar, you should always stretch them. Okay, so that's a regular guitar. Um, I'm gonna do the baritone now, um, but first let me clean up like this little string situation. Okay, so that is uh, how I restring my guitars. Um, and yes, I restring all the guitars, the electrics, the acoustics. I, I restring all my guitars this way. So uh, that's my guitar collection. That's how I restring guitars, that's how I tech. Um, so, thank you uh, for joining me th on this week's episode of Tour on Tuesday. And I'll see you uh, next time for next episode of Tour on, which means, ne I'll see you next week. <laughs>